welcome to Travel Bubble and to Istanbul. My name is Adam and in this video we're going to be taking you on our exploration of the city with some tips and tricks along the way. So why don't we get started? It is our first day here in the city of Istanbul. We arrived late last night after quite a long travel day, especially getting the airport shuttle buses down. It was a little bit complicated, but we're here in the main old town center and we're going to start the day with a classic walking tour to get ourselves orientated and learn some things about the city. The walking tour started in the Sultanahmet Square. It used to be the Hippodrome of Constantinople when the city was the capital of the Byzantine Empire. There are several monuments here. The Obelisk of Theodosius, the Egyptian one. The Walled Obelisk, which was nearest to where we stayed. The course of the old racetrack has been indicated with paving, although the actual track is some two meters below the surface, as seen at the Serpentine Column. Istanbul is the largest city in Turkey, with around 15 million people, one-fifth of the population. But it's not the capital, that is a place called Ankara. We visited inside a mosque to learn about Islamic culture and prayer. Prayer happens five times a day called Salat and it is one of the five pillars of faith. The walking tour also took us through part of the Grand Bazaar, but we'll come back here in more detail later. At the end of the tour, we sampled some Turkish delights and tea. Then it was time for a buffet lunch at a place recommended by our guide. There were lots of dishes on offer here for about a dollar. Local people came in and ate so quickly whilst we sat and enjoyed our meal. We've just finished the Basilica Cistern, uh, which has only recently reopened after a long period of renovation. This is the largest of several hundred cisterns that lay beneath Istanbul. It used to hold water. You can now walk around it on slightly raised platforms and see the 336 marble columns. There are also some artistic sculptures. In ancient times, if fish were swimming in the water, people knew it was safe to drink. And if there were no fish, or they were dead, it alerted them to possible contamination, accidental or by an enemy. In the rear corner, there are two Medusa heads at the column bases, positioned sideways or upside down to avert the power of her gaze. It's quite humid and dark down there, but it's definitely worth visiting if you come to the city. We are staying in the Sultanahmet area, which is considered the old town. It is on the European side of Istanbul. There are actually two sides and we'll get to see a little bit of the Asian side later on in this video. Um, but on this side we have the Hagia Sophia. There is always a long line, but we found the best time to go was straight after one of the prayer times. You'll hear all around the city the calls to prayer happening. At that time, tourists are not allowed to go into the mosques as that is observed for local people uh, with their prayer time. But if you kind of queue up outside once they're finished and you can go in, you don't have to wait for a line and it's usually nice and clear on the inside. Look up as you walk inside to see the beautiful inner domes and large circular murals with Islamic inscriptions. There are low-hanging chandeliers and carpeted floors with prayer lines facing towards Mecca. It used to be a church in the Byzantine Empire called Church of the Holy Wisdom. Then it became a mosque, then a museum, and now it's back to a mosque. It's also free to enter. This golden box is the Sultan's Lodge. They could join the prayer without being seen, and it was also for protection. 
leave via the southwest entrance and look back to see a mosaic of Virgin Mary, another example of previous use. Outside, you can see the tombs of five Ottoman sultans and their families, here as they paid towards the upkeep of the place. The Blue Mosque is currently under reconstruction. You can kind of see a little bit from the outside, but there's not too much to see there. However, you can go in the Grand Bazaar, as we did. The Grand Bazaar certainly lives up to its name. It is one of the largest and oldest covered markets in the world, with over 4,000 shops and a bustling activity of 250,000 visitors per day. Built in the Ottoman era, it was a hub for trade between Europe and Asia. It definitely got lost walking the streets, past gold, silver shops, jewellery stores, spice stores, lanterns, carpets, leather and real fake goods merchants. If you wish to buy something, you must haggle hard. Most shops are same same, and local people don't shop here much, they mainly use it for money exchange. Even if you don't want to buy anything, it makes for a fascinating and free visit. In the evening, we bought some chestnuts from a vendor outside Gulhane Park. It is a great place to chill after a day in the city. Although aimed at tourists, you won't be short of restaurant options in the historic centre. They're all fairly similar with good prices, big meals and often a cat or two. It is another day for us here in Istanbul. We spent the day yesterday scratching the surface, so we're going to go and check out the spice market and let's see what we can get up to. The spice market feels a lot calmer than the Grand Bazaar. Um, it's only two streets, obviously most of the shops are same same, um, but I feel here you would get a better price even though both of these markets is not where local people go to get their produce and goods. If you were going across to the northern part of Istanbul, um, where the Galata Tower is for example, we recommend getting off at the stop just before the Spice Market. I'll put the name of it here as I'm not too sure about the pronunciation. From here you can walk across the bridge, the Galata Bridge, and see the local people fishing. We were lucky enough to see somebody actually hook up a fish and they serve these in the restaurants underneath the bridge. And we were informed by a local guy that if you want to get a fish sandwich, the best place to go is on the north side of the river as that is where they grill the fish rather than fry. Um, and once you've got there, it's very easy to walk up to the Galata Tower. In the Beyelu district of Istanbul, you'll find the Galata Tower. After queuing up for your tickets and climbing 146 steps up nine storeys, you get 360 degree views from a small observation deck. It is one of the only remaining parts of the old district walls and has had many uses over its time, such as a prison, a lighthouse, a watchtower for defence and a fire detection tower. Step out onto the pretty streets nearby for a bite to eat and a great view back of the Galata Tower. We have found public transport here to be really useful and really cheap. You have the Istanbul cart, which you can get for 50 lira. It looks like this. And then you can top up for your journey. It's usually around seven to eight lira per journey. And that is a fixed price. So if you're going one stop or five stops, and that is applicable for tram lines and ferries as well. and you can also take a ferry across to the Asian side, which is what we did. Now we're going to go and see everything from the water. I think we're able just to take a local ferry uh, to be able to get a good river cruise. There are tours on offer, but this is a nice, cheap and easy way to do so. So let's go and see Istanbul from the water. There are boats constantly going about to various places along the city. 
Istanbul straddles the Bosphorus Strait, and as mentioned, there is no need for a boat tour here. The ferry will take you to the Asian side, passing many sites with a more authentic feel. We've just taken a ferry across to the Asian side of Istanbul and now we're on another ferry. We don't actually know where this one goes, but we're on it. So hopefully it goes up and down the river. It's an adventure for everyone. So let's see where we end up. Okay, we did get a bit confused with where to go, but being out on the water was enjoyable and we were able to take it slow away from the crazy busy nature of the main center, passing the Dolomabachi Palace and seeing the 15th of July Martyrs Bridge. We headed a bit further north on a wet day to the shopping area of Taskim to see one of the city's famous historic red and white tramps that runs down the street from the square. It only goes every 40 minutes though, so you have to be quick. It's not all about the sightseeing here in Turkey. It's the perfect opportunity to visit a Turkish hammam. This is the old traditional baths. Uh, most places are reservation, so check it out online which one you would like to go to. The ones that are attached to hotels are not always the most authentic. Um, we chose one that allowed couples, so you can both go in together as some are only hours specifically for men and only specifically for women. You get into your swimming costume. You can lay on this big marble block that is heated as well as a small sauna room and bathe yourself with the water. After some time, they'll come and get you for the scrubbing and the massage, which is about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, again, you'll lay on another marble block and a guy for the guys will um, use this uh, mitt and scrub all of your dead skin off. They'll take a layer off like, uh, like you're a reptile and then they'll bathe you with the soap. It's kind of like some big foam thing they just cover you in and then they give you a, a massage which is a little bit rough. It's kind of they just pinch the edge of your muscles, give you a bit of a whack um, and then they just rinse you off. Uh, you sit up, wash your hair and you feel relaxed and new. It was a really great experience, the one we went to. I'll put the name of it at the bottom. I would definitely recommend it. It ended up being around 700 lira, which is about 35 pounds. So I think a really enjoyable experience and you get to sit and chill afterwards as well with some Turkish tea. We've been staying at the Rumours Inn. I would definitely recommend it for a short stay here in the city. Watching the sunset on our time in Istanbul, we reflected on an amazing stay, full of ancient sites with rich history, mixed with modern culture, food, life and lots of cats. We hope you've enjoyed our video of Istanbul. Next up, we're heading on a flight to the Cappadocia area, so subscribe and like and join us for that video real soon.